Hey gang, welcome to week four. Thank you for being patient with me as we are posting um, these video lecture a little bit late. Uh, we, like I said in the announcement, we were um, at a state park until last night and the internet was just not cooperating with me very well. So this seemed to be the best course of action um, to wait till I got home. It just was never gonna upload to YouTube and. It was pretty frustrating as technology can sometimes be. So um, we are in Blackboard and I just kind of want to talk <clears throat> a little bit about your assignment for this week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click over here in the assignments tab, scroll down until you can see the technology lesson plans that are due um, in the next couple of weeks. So there's actually three due dates that concern this assignment. The first one is you are going to turn your lesson plan rough draft into a partner or peer editor. Um, that peer editor will have an entire week to look through your lesson plan. You are going to use the lesson plan rubric to score your partner's lesson plan. And I'm opening that right now so you can kind of see what it looks like. I would like you to um, Go ahead and score them based on these categories and then I think it would be very helpful if you left them some comments as well. So either use space at the bottom or feel free to make a column where you highlight or just um, pop some notes underneath. So maybe this would be where my feedback is um, and include that for your partner. Okay. So that is going to be due the following week. So 1116, your lesson plan is due to your peer editor. Your peer editor will have edited your lesson plan and returned it back to you on the 23rd of November. And then lastly, on 1130, you're gonna turn that into me for a final grade. So I did include documents here to help you. There is the lesson plan rubric. Um, there is a blank lesson plan template for you to kind of fill in. And I've included an example from um, a previous student for you kind of to see what an exemplary lesson plan would look like. Now, I don't expect you to necessarily come up with something new and original. Feel free to find a lesson plan that has been taught um, and posted online and then modify it to fit the Missouri Learning Standards, um, and maybe the grade level of your choice using some type of technology tool. So there might be an amazing reading lesson that you found online, but it needs to be enhanced and integrate technology. So you would um, adapt to that lesson plan to fit your needs. Now, these peer editors that I'm talking about, let's go ahead and look in Blackboard um, and see what I'm referring to. So over here on the left, you should have a tab that says groups. When you click inside groups, you are going to see that I've got six outlined for you. When you click inside, you should be able to see who the members are. So first of all, um, you've got Casey and Daniel would be in group one. You can use any of these tools to collaborate with. However, in the past, I found it most helpful to use the file exchange option. And you can add your files for one another simply by going to add file and attaching and then submitting. Um, that's where I would recommend submitting your initial um, lesson plan and then your partner could submit their feedback for you and the rubric for you right there as well. So that is where I would like you guys to go ahead <clears throat> and post those documents. So hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. I do realize that some of you have not written a lesson plan yet, so that template and that example should help you out quite a bit. Um, in addition, some other assignments that I'm getting a little concerned about specifically is your Twitter assignment. So I don't know if you guys were aware, 
but anybody is able to search the hashtag that we're using for our class. So we're using MBU373. If I pop that into the search tab up here, I can see um, any post that has used that hashtag. Now I'm very, very proud of Taylor for posting um, an article right here. It looks like Elisheba um, is talking about diversity. Um, Sammy's made a post. These need to be made on a regular basis. I would highly suggest you put um, Twitter posts up several times per week. At the very end of our course, you are responsible for writing a reflection. And I'm going to go back um, and see that you've been tweeting on a regular basis. This is a communication tool. This is a communication tool that's being used in districts across the St. Louis area and across the country. So, for example, Elise has posted this math problem, but it doesn't look like anybody has interacted with her. Nobody's tried to... Um, figure it out or explain their thinking. Um, all you have to do is reply and then you are more or less starting the conversation using this communication tool. Um, I challenged some of you just to post resources um, and it does look like Taylor's done that using this link up above. Um, but you're also going to have to interact with one another. That's the key thing that I'm looking for is that interaction. Please, please, please make sure you're doing that. We're already in week four. So that is something um, that you cannot let slip by. I know Twitter can be a little intimidating um, when you first jump into it. Using our hashtag, the only people that are really following that is our class members. Um, and then hopefully anybody who's following you is also seeing those tweets. I believe your requirement is you need to follow 50 people. So hopefully you are getting some um, traffic on your Twitter web pages as well. Picture yourself in the shoes of a teacher and think about some of the things that you may communicate using Twitter to your students, to your parents. Um, I'm just going to pull up a hashtag that's used quite often in my district. Um, again, I work for Francis Health School District. If I pop up Francis FHSD Learns, you can see that um, Fairmont Elementary has posted some pictures from their Veterans Day celebration. Eric Sider is our Board of Education president. He's retweeted that um, to all his followers. So it's something that's very important in our district when um, really board members are following it. You know it's something that they're watching and looking out for. Um, Here's some more information about a new class that's coming out. Here's some of our administrators learning in a PD session. Um, just go ahead and scrolling down. You just got some other great things that are happening in our district. Um, original Fairmont Bell has been donated to Fairmont by Dr. Brown. The Bell is home to stay. So just some more information. These are actually two of my elementary principals who just started tweeting. Very, very proud of them. Uh, Ted Hoff is a middle school principal. Just some good stuff here. There's a picture of me. <laughs> Lovely. I was doing a, a faculty meeting at a school. But you can see that we're kind of celebrating here and showcasing our learning in the Francis Health School District. What things, again, would you communicate to a parent um, using this type of tool? Uh, as a parent, I would appreciate getting information from my my um, my teachers um, of my of my child. So um, keep aware of that. Again, to see who is interacting with you, if you go up to your notifications, it will tell you um, people who have recently followed you. And then, like if I scroll down to November sixth, um, there's one Taylor. I asked her to post a resource and she used my name in the tweet back to me. So that showed up on my notifications page. Debbie Fucoloro is um, an ed tech specialist in a, in a district nearby. So these are the things I'm looking for on your Twitter account. Again, if I were to look at your profile, I want to see a very recognizable picture. If I further look at your profile, I want to see that you've filled out 
your profile indicating that you are a teacher and you're looking to connect with some other people. Okay. Another thing that I don't want you to fall behind in is your Indigo account. So I'm just going to pull up mine real quickly and just kind of showcase some things that are on there. So on the left right here, you can see all the tags that I've used. You can also see how many <laughs> tags I have. Um, but you can also see any lists that I have. And I'm scrolling down quite quickly because I saved my Twitter favorites in here too. I have mapped my accounts together. Um, let's just find an example. Waiting for Digo. Come on, Internet. So what you're about to see and what you can already see on this page is um, I was saving information on Amendment 3 because I was sharing that with some parents. Um, you can tell that it's put into a list. Here are my different tags that go for each one. I don't know how many times I can click and be patient here. Um, let's see. Okay, here we go. So, um, here is one that I started saving on project-based learning. You can see that, again, I've got these different tags going. I've tagged it PBL, project-based learning, questioning, inquiry, inquiry-based instruction, and I've also put it into a couple of different groups. So not only do I have my lists, but I have my groups. The point of that is it automatically starts to share with people that have subscribed to those groups. And also when I'm searching, I know that if I put in PBL or maybe spell out the whole entire word project-based learning, I'm going to find that specific bookmark. Um, again, I'm working in Chrome. In Chrome, I just use my Digo extension and then this is how I save bookmarks and annotate them. If I were going to a page um, and I was in Firefox, let's just say I'm doing CNN.com, I would most likely use this Digolette, which I also do have in Firefox and it's going to look very similar. And I can bookmark my site. Hopefully this looks familiar to you. Write a description of my site. Um, and make sure I uncheck that private box. If you keep that private box checked, I can't see your resources and either can your friends in our classes. Um, give it some tags. Breaking news. I'll just call it news. Um, I might call it nonfiction because it is nonfiction reading. Um, looks like just as I'm scrolling through this. There was a rescue. I can add it to a list, which are on the side, and, and makes it easy, easily searchable. And again, I can share it to a group. Maybe I specifically want my fifth grade Spectra class to see this um, bookmark. Maybe um, my MECC 2014 group, project-based learning, whatever the case may be. Actually, I'm not going to share it with either of those groups. I'm going to pop it in here and then just save. Okay, something that we have not talked about is you can tweet directly from Digo, which I think is a pretty cool feature. Um, up here at the top, now that I've bookmarked something, if I go to share, I can share it directly to Twitter. Once upon a time when I did this, it asked me to um, input my Twitter address. Once I've done that, all I have to do is share a link with your followers. I would probably add a hashtag if it was pertinent to our course. So I, I did go ahead and do that. Um, so you guys will be able to see that tweet. Tweet it out and it's done. So you find an amazing resource. Oops. Finding an amazing resource in um, Digo and then share it with us through Twitter. Again, you're using it to further communicate. Um, sorry about that. I'm getting distracted by a bunch of emails that are coming in all of a sudden. 
So use the tools that are available to you in Blackboard this week to um, interact with your peer editor. Um, I'm looking forward to perusing through the multimedia tools that you provided. I did give you an opportunity for extra credit. It doesn't look like many of you took advantage of that. I'm going to go back to the discussions real quick. I was hoping to see some of you link to your actual examples of the multimedia projects that you created. So for example, if I did one on, I'm just going to pick on, let's pick on Patrick. So if I did Photo Peach, he created this M4. Patrick, what I would do is maybe upload that Chose. to YouTube and then you'd have the YouTube link to share and then tweet it on Twitter. So now not only are the people in our class benefiting from the tutorial that you made, but your followers on Twitter are going to be benefiting in the same way. But don't forget to use the hashtag, okay? As always, um, email me any questions, pop them into the discussion board. I wish you guys the very best week that you can have. Um, I will be catching up on week two and three grading this weekend. So um, have a great week. God bless and let me know how I can help.